Our next caller is Jenna from Iowa. Hey, Jenna, how can we help you? Uh, yes, uh, first of all, I'm a big fan. I am a personal trainer here at the University of Iowa. Got a lot of clients, and so I take all of your guys' advice. <laughs> uh, my question is very personal, though. I am a 38-year-old mother of two, and um, I love competing in strongman and powerlifting competitions. Awesome. I competed in my first strongman competition this year. Um, and about two months ago, my husband and I started a plant-based diet. So I don't call it vegan um, because it's actually more restrictive than vegan. We basically eat plant-based. We try to stay away from processed foods, um, which is pretty similar to what you guys recommend on your podcast. And we've really been enjoying it. Um, it's been saving our family money and uh, my digestion and sleep have improved. My energy levels are amazing and it's cleared up my skin, which is pretty awesome. Uh, but there's been one downside to eating plant-based as opposed to when I was eating meat and dairy and all the fun stuff. And that's my powerlifting weights and my strongman lifting weights have all decreased about five to 15 pounds, uh, which for me as a competitor and someone who really enjoys getting strong has been super frustrating. So I didn't know if you guys had advice on why all the other things in my life are improving, uh, but my strength is not. So any advice you can give would be very helpful. I want to ask one more, a couple questions before Sal jumps in and talks for 15 minutes. Um, <laughs> do, do you currently supplement with creatine by chance? So I supplement um, with creatine, about five milligrams, okay. I think, okay. uh, per day. And uh, I also try to take a protein powder and eat a lot of beans. But um, I know you guys have talked about being vegan in the past. It's, it's very hard to eat that many beans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they're pretty bland, to be honest. Well, so, um, that yeah, was, I try to watch my protein. That was my next question was, do you track your protein intake consistently? Because that would, if you're already supplementing creatine, that would be the first thing. The second thing I would ask is, how consistent are you with hitting 100 grams plus of protein every day? So I'm not consistent hitting that high. And, you know, I've read a lot on uh, vegan plant-based diets. They actually recommend um, a lot less protein per body weight. Um, so I've been anywhere from, I would say, more 50 to 60 grams of protein yeah. per day. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And even, that's been pretty hard to achieve. Yeah, it's yeah. too low. Yeah, that's, that's why you're feeling it. Yeah, if you're um, if if you if, if everything was controlled, right? So if your calories were the same as before, your proteins, fats, and carbs were the same were the same as before. You know, Adam mentioned creatine. Creatine it benefits uh, vegans quite a bit because they don't get any from uh, their plant based sources. So if you're doing that, you're not having any nutrient deficiencies, and everything else is controlled. Um, and then you come and say, "Hey, I'm weaker." Then we're gonna have to look a little deeper. But yeah. I would it's probably due to the fact that you're your calories yes. and or your protein or other macronutrients aren't matching what they were uh, before. Um, now, here, here's what I would do. I would try to get in it. And I know what they recommend with the plant-based, uh, you know, the, the plant-based advice is to eat less protein. And here's why they say that. The reason why they say that is because it's hard to get protein <laughs> yeah. from plant-based sources. There really is no uh, evidence uh, or value of eating, of eating uh, low protein, except for maybe in some exceptions. There, there may be some exceptions to that particular rule, but otherwise a high protein diet, not only is it safe, it's healthy and for performance, it's uh, superior. So a couple things you could do either try to get more protein from your food, but if that's difficult, which it sounds like it is, I would supplement with plant-based protein uh, mm. powders to make up for it. And then here's the other thing I want you to, to keep in mind. I'm glad you said that your digestion and sleep and skin are better because uh, that is showing that there may be some benefits. Sometimes the benefits are not because you're not eating meat, but rather because you're not eating processed foods or right. other foods that- Or you're you know, incorporating a lot more vegetables than you're used to eating in your diet, which has you know a great effect in, in terms of being anti-inflammatory. You know, so you know there's some benefits that you're realizing from that, but also too, was it, was it a conscious decision to stop eating meat? Like what was that decision process uh, going into this? Um, my husband uh, read a book called uh, How Not to Die, which was a really popular book published a couple of years ago, 
showing okay. the links between a plant-based diet and increased lifespan. And I think we did it for our kids. Um, but I got really discouraged because um, it seemed like it was almost impossible to be a strongman athlete or a successful powerlifter and be vegan. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's just, it's been harder path than I realized. And this, and this is, this is the problem I have with any diet. This is, uh, if you guys aren't doing it for any other reason than that, first of all, it's it's not hard to write a book, cherry pick studies, and make something sound like it's better than something else. And if you guys are not opposed to adding some fish or chicken or turkey into the diet every once in a while to increase your protein intake, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I just recently switched over to eating, I should say, a, a carnivore-esque diet. And the reason why I said esque, and I quickly announced it and talked about it on the podcast that I'm not following somebody's protocol in a book that I have to do these certain things. My idea is I'm using it like an elimination diet. I'm, I'm getting rid of a lot of the other stuff, and then I'm just going to slowly add stuff into back into my diet and pay attention to how I feel. Like Sal and Justin both alluded to, you obviously have seen positive benefits for you to switch over that. Now, it doesn't mean that it was that you know meat was causing all those issues before. It just probably means that there you're getting either lots of benefits from eating all the vegetables that you were eating, or you've eliminated a single thing or two that was the offender. And if you're okay and open to it, I would start to reintroduce one one source of protein that maybe comes from meat into your diet and just see how you feel like maybe just start with fish you know because that's going to be probably one of the easiest ones or chicken and see how you guys feel if it helps boost your protein intake you see strength go up and you don't see any side effects from it i would include that in and still run your you know, dom predominantly plant-based diet, but then you have these little bits of, of protein that you're or meat that you're using for to bump. That would be what I would yeah. do. Janet, Janet, pay attention to libido. Pay attention to um, you, you said your strength is going down. So look at libido. Uh, that's an important thing. Look at your uh, your menstrual cycle or any other symptoms of hormone changes, and and this is for your husband as well. Okay, because if you start to see those change in ways that don't seem healthy then what you're doing isn't entirely uh, healthy. I mean, I would even, I would, I mean, I would, I'm actually going to give you different advice than Adam. I'd say throw in some grass fed beef or some eggs, get some cholesterol, uh, get some of those saturated fats in there. They actually have benefits when it comes to strength and muscle and getting strong is not unhealthy. Uh, getting strong is healthy. Now, of course you could do it in unhealthy ways, lots of anabolic steroids, lots of, you know, body fat on your body to improve, you know, to increase leverage and that kind of stuff. But if you're otherwise healthy, lean, you're natural, you're not using drugs or whatever, um, and you're getting strong, or if you get weaker, uh, getting weaker is usually not a sign of, of, of overall better health, right? Mm -hmm. So in fact, I'll tell you this much right now, okay? And I know you guys read that book. One of the greatest predictors of all cause mortality is weakness. Yeah. It's actually better. Grip, grip strength. It's better than, uh, than whether or not someone's on a plant-based diet or not. And also consider this, when they do those studies, or write these books, they're comparing a whole natural food, plant-based diet to the typical American diet that includes meat. Um, so, you know, oh, these, these people eat meat and they're unhealthy. Well, it's not necessarily the meat, it's the buns that come with the burgers right. and, the fries and, the, and everything else. And, and all these excess calories. Um, so, and I'll tell you what, you know, if you control your macros and calories, I would challenge you to include some meat with in control calories and macros and, and make sure it's whole and natural. And I would bet that you probably would feel better. Um, you, you probably, now not everybody, there's going to be exceptions to this rule, but I would bet you're better. So the fact that you're losing strength tells me that there's something that's lacking. We're guessing that's protein. I mean, it's and almost calories, obvious. It's, pro it's almost too, obvious yeah. it's protein. Yeah. I mean, if, if you went for, if she's barely hitting 50 or 60, I mean, this is a it's classic example of one of the easiest things that I would help clients. I would. It was very common for me to get a female client that was, under consuming you know, protein on a regular basis and just simply getting her protein up to 90 plus a, a day instantly she would feel the response yeah. in the gym that try, means, try this have have some grass-fed uh beef once right give yourself a serving of grass-fed beef and then see how you feel the day after and if you feel better the day after uh, there's there's a good sign that that's that's probably something that you need, and usually that's what happens. Somebody will throw in. I've had clients like you, and I'll have them eat. Okay, let's eat uh, uh you know a grass fed patty, 
or steak tonight and then let's see how you feel tomorrow. And it's like, oh my God, I feel stronger already. Um, and I'm like, okay, this is something that we might need to include into your diet. Yeah, something I should also add is I'm breastfeeding. So I'm nursing a nine month old. And so I kind of feel sometimes too that he takes a lot out of me. Of so I wonder if the whole nursing while powerlifting training and everything is also contributing to the energy levels. Um, yeah, actually, that's a great, that's a good point. So you notice but the strength. But also why you would need more protein right. yeah, more and more calories. Yes. Too. Yeah, you, you notice the strength losses when you started breastfeeding or were you already breastfeeding when you went plant-based? I was already breastfeeding when I went plant-based, but as soon as I went plant, plant-based, plant the strength went down. Okay, so it's probably due to the diet then, I would say. It's probably not due to, to the breastfeeding. And by the way, if, if you're... If, you, if there's a nutrient that you're lacking because you've eliminated one of the most nutrient-dense foods on the planet, which is, and this is a fact, okay, um, if you could only pick one food and survive, now this is not ideal, but if you only had to pick one food and survive off of it, it would be meat. It wouldn't. There's no single plant uh, that can do that because, because meat is very nutrient-dense. So if you're lacking a nutrient, even before you get to nutrient deficiency where there's like, you know, like big outward signs, if you're lacking a nutrient and it's not optimal, it could be you know something that you pass on even through your breast milk. So pay attention to that. I would throw in a little bit of meat, test it out. Don't throw five different types of meat at yourself at once. That's I would right. leave dairy last because dairy tends to be the one that people have the highest intolerance to. So throw in something. You know, it could be anything. I would, I would personally, I would choose either eggs or grass-fed beef. See how you feel. If you feel great from it. Awesome. Um, and then start including those types of things and make sure you hit those protein requirements or those protein numbers uh, that tend to be optimal for strength. Awesome. Thanks, you guys. Like I said, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of the show. Listen to you guys all the time. And thanks to Adam. I'm here in Iowa uh, outside walking my dog barefoot. Now yeah, the <laughs> that's my girl. Awesome. That's, my, that's my girl. Awesome. Thanks for calling in. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, this is why I fucking hate the diet book fucking world yeah, right here. It is, and they do such a good job. It's of, so convincing. Too. It is. Yeah. I mean, read, read, you know, uh, Paul's carnivore book, read Rob's paleo, but I mean, you can cherry pick studies to put them all together to make the case that this way of eating is the most ideal. But the reality is there's such an individual variance to every single person. And mm -hmm. if you're not doing it for moral reasons, right, which I know you asked, one of you asked yeah, that, Justin asked that right that away. Out. And she said, no, they did it because of this book. That took, for health. Yeah, for mm -hmm. health. And then you notice strength go down. Well, it's which not a big indicator of health. Yeah. Is, is, and is how your strength. I mean, is. we didn't ask her weight. I'm assuming she weighs more than 100 pounds. And so her eating 50 grams or less of protein, right? I mean, right away, I guarantee you, she bumps that to 90 grams plus. Oh, she'll feel that. She'll feel that. Yeah. She'll feel it in the gym, right? Yeah, away. and that's the problem is people switch to a diet and they don't control all the factors and they're like, oh my gosh, I feel uh, better. And it's like, you're eating less. <laughs> you were overeating before or you're not eating processed food. Yeah. That's probably what the issue was. But Yeah, you got to tease all that out. Yeah, and you got to be careful. I mean, uh, nutrient deficiencies are way higher in, in vegans than they are in people who eat an omnivore diet. By the way, I'm comparing healthy to healthy. So I'm yeah. not comparing standard American crappy diet to plant-based. Healthy to healthy, more variety versus less variety. You're going to have more nutrient deficiencies. Right. It's a fact. It's proven. Uh, this is not even uh, a debate. So, um, And I've worked with so many. I've had so many female clients like this. It's the, I don't know why I feel this way. I eat plant-based. We'll throw in a little red meat, their hair stops falling out, or their menstrual cycle comes back, and it's like, okay, like you were yeah. not healthy. Yeah. yeah, and it's not to say there's not outliers who who benefit from that, but also too, like it's so difficult to get all those nutrients just with that specific diet itself. Yeah, no, you 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 could not go plant based no. if it weren't for modern supermarkets. That's it. It's it you would die. You, there's no there, there's no such thing as plant based. Hunter I love though that she's she's so consistent. She's a consistent. And she's a trainer, so she knows yeah. what she's doing. So she can see this, right? Yeah. If you're somebody who does like something is off, right? If you don't train consistently, you don't you miss this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you miss the signal that hey, maybe this isn't perfect right. for me. Because then they see all these other benefits. Like yeah, the skin's clearing up. Right, better sleep. You know, but then yeah, you there's know, some they good. Realize, right, yeah, yeah, these other big and factors. and that's why too. I wouldn't completely abandon the diet. I wouldn't right. say oh stop. That, that could still be the the main thing. But then just throw in be temporary you know you go through this and then and then you come back to or just, more, or just slowly introduce diet. like you know we were all i mean i don't care what you pick i mean pick eggs pick grass-fed beef pick fish pick pick one 
and introduce it. Yeah. Just to just to increase the protein intake and whatever nutrients that you could get from that that you might not have been getting from plants, see how you feel, mm -hmm. and then either okay, just make that the one meat that you introduce and keep in there, or start to slowly introduce the mm -hmm. other ones and see how you feel too.